Trillo Nation, this message is specifically for my cops out there. Cops, I know work is stressful. I know you want to make that overtime, okay, especially when you're a young officer. But hear me out. Make time for yourself, especially make time for your family, okay? You need to do that. Don't fall in the trap that so many of us have been doing for so many years, okay? Find yourself a good jiu-jitsu school. If you live near me, come train with me. But if not, any school. I will never tell you that only my academy or a certain academy. No, any good jiu-jitsu school, the jiu-jitsu you're gonna learn is sufficient for, for your line of work. You just have to make it work for you, okay? Not everything that's taught in the academy, you're going to use. But this is where common sense would come in, okay? Uh, you got to keep things very, very simple, okay? That's how I approach my training with my officers. I keep it very simple, nothing fancy, okay? When I, I'm referring to um, cop training, nothing fancy. You need to learn all these arm bars. You need to learn all these uh, leg locks, strangulations. Actually, when I teach seminars, many are surprised when I tell them I don't teach any submissions at all. Zero. Zero. The only controlling technique I teach is the kimura, okay? Double wrist lock is primarily what I refer to it in law enforcement because you can't call it a kimura in a police class. They're like, what the hell is that? So I call it a double wrist lock. Uh, if there's a better word out there then that sounds good, I would use it. But to me, it sounds decent enough, double wrist lock for the kimura. Um, I teach that as a controlling technique. Anything else, really? Nothing else, really. Nothing else. So if you wanna know what I'm teaching my guys in seminars, that's what it is. A lot of control, a lot of takedowns, side, cross side control, mount control, some back control, okay? But that's basically it. So if you're watching this and you're an instructor somewhere and you wanna teach some cops, you wanna know what to teach cops, stick to that. Okay, I'm referring to if you're just doing like a, cla uh, a class for police work that maybe don't have any long-term inspirations of continuing jiu-jitsu, you stick to the very basics and you follow that guide. That's the recipe. If we can get all, the, all of our instructors to start teaching the same thing to all of our cops, all of our cops across the nation should be doing the same exact techniques. And when somebody does something that's not part of what we normally teach, it'll be easy to spot. Okay, now that's not to put anybody in check. That's just to make everybody, you know, uh, so we can all work together and be doing the same thing. Our, our police work has been always uh, based on the 70s concept, the striking arts, the Bruce Lee era. Okay, that was good for that time. But things have evolved so much more. Okay, I tell people all the time, I can teach a cop to completely neutralize, control, take into custody, restrain a subject without laying one strike on them. And they're like, well, how do you do that? How do you how do you control somebody without hitting them? Easy, jujitsu. Okay, it's not easy if you don't know it, but it is much easier when you know it, especially when you're dealing with the public, 99.9% .9 which don't know any jujitsu. And you take a jujitsu, you've been training for a couple of weeks, and you try to go against somebody that has nothing. You you'd be surprised at how easy it is to control them. So that's the magic. The other magic is on your part. You need to be consistent and come to class. You need to come to class. This once a week is okay, but I mean, guess once a week is what, 52 lessons a year? That's better than most, the vast majority of, of the cops out there that are doing zero, they're not doing any training, okay? But the more you give yourself, the better you're gonna get. I don't reach the status that I'm at, my age, by not eating healthy, by not working out and by not training. And here I am pretty much retired out of police work already. And I, man, I can still do jujitsu for like 20 more years. I, I really feel I could, I have, I still have a whole lifestyle in front of me, uh, a whole life that I can enjoy and, um, and share this wonderful art with you guys. So any cops out there that are local and wanna start training with me, you know where I'm at, Trillo Jiu Jitsu Academy. I'm here on Miami Gardens Drive. But you don't, but it's not, it's not just Freddie Trillo. There's wonderful jiu-jitsu schools around the world. Find one, sign up, whether it's gi or no gi, 
It really doesn't matter. Let me tell you, the first 17 years that uh, I'm mostly known for my no gi, but people don't know that for my first 17 years, I was basically all gi. That's all I did. Gi for 17 years. And uh, then I started going into more of the no gi, and now I love it. I, I love the moon no gi more. Um, but that means nothing uh, when it comes to the training, really, because my the vast majority of my police work was when I was doing the gi training, and it translated very easy to police work. I had no issues. So this thing about gi, no gi for police work, it's really... I don't base this off of what others say. I base this off of my personal experience because I was the first uh, South Florida police officer, to my knowledge, to receive the black belt. I don't know of anyone else. I was one of the first. How do I know this? Because I was one of the first to start it in the mid 90s. Okay, there's very few of us left. I trained with, I got to train with, with, with many great instructors. And I'm not going to name any right now. I'm not going to, but, but, but the point is that um, I started with the gi and now I'm no gi. But the reality is you take what's good and you apply it to yourself. And that's where common sense uh, comes into play. And uh, you apply it to, to your police work. So um, keep it simple. Let's all be on the same page. There's no need to be teaching arm bars, submissions, no submissions at all. When I'm teaching a cop class, just pure control. If we can get all instructors to start teaching the same way, then we can get a, a, a unified system across our nation, hopefully the world, where we have most cops doing the same thing. Takedown, side control, mount control, back control, everything leading to handcuffing. Did I say any submissions? No, because there are none. No submissions. Universally, I think... I, I think uh, nationwide, no departments allow any strangulation. So whatever, it is what it is. We deal with it and we move forward. So we don't teach any. No arm bars, no foot locks, no nothing. Control, 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 leading to restraints. The best tool that you could use le leading to this restraint is the Kimora or double wrist lock, which is what I refer to it in police work. So um, stay focused, keep training, Spend time with the family, but don't quit, guys. Don't quit because the big ugly is around the corner. And a lot of cops have, this, this year has been horrible with cops being assaulted. I think the numbers are, are through the roof. Um, so don't be that victim. See you on the mats. I'm out.